The new Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, Keir Starmer, has invited the people to join him in his government of service. He gave his first speech in office at number 10, Downing Street, with a large crowd of supporters cheering. The promise to restore trust in government and to fight to achieve that until the people believe it. He's right now appointing a new cabinet. We have more in this report. Giving his first speech in his number 10 Downing Street office, the newly elected Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, Keir Starmer, started by giving recognition to the dedication and hard work of his predecessor, Rishi Sunak, and went on to add that for the UK to move forward, the country must be made first and political party alignment second. Mr. Stammer identified that everyone must move forward together. He says the UK needs a reset and public service is a privilege. Quoting his words, the world is now a more volatile place and work for change begins now. He pledged his administration's commitment to improvements in the education sector and work dignity, but encouraged the nation to be calm in the rebuilding process. <laughs> Labour won the UK general election in a landslide, which results from almost all the parliamentary seats declared. <laughs> Conceding victory, Outgoing Prime Minister Rishi Sunak was first to announce Labour had won the election at about 5 a.m. He apologized to his party and campaigners over their anger and disappointment and formally tendered his resignation to King Charles III during an audience at the Buckingham Palace. To all the Conservative candidates and campaigners who worked tirelessly but without success, I'm sorry that we could not deliver what your efforts deserved. It pains me to think how many good colleagues who contributed so much to their communities and our country will now no longer sit in the House of Commons. I thank them for their hard work and their service. Leader of the Labour Party and winner of the Prime Ministerial seat, Keir Stammer, also met with King Charles, who told him to go ahead and form a new government. The Conservative Party lost more than 250 seats and now stands as the opposition. The outgoing Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, has pledged to resign as party leader. Several cabinet ministers in his party lost their seats, including former Prime Minister Liz Truss. Nigel Farage of the Populist Reform UK Party, a close ally of former US leader Donald Trump, won the party's first seat and came second in many more, splitting the right-wing votes and contributing to the losses of the Conservatives. The Liberal Democrats, who will be the third biggest party in Parliament, got their best results in years. From 11 seats in the last parliament, the Liberal Democrats had up to 71 seats in the count at 8 a.m. They celebrated their victory at the party's headquarters in London. For more on this historic election, a political commentator, Nathaniel Oguni, joins me now from London in the United Kingdom. Good to have you join us on World Now. A historic election has been in the UK with Labour winning a landslide and Conservatives recording their worst defeat in history. Did you see that coming? 
So I suppose the writing was on the wall. If you look at the election polls since about 2021, so for the last three or more years, the Labour Party has been ahead. And so it's not entirely surprising that they have won a majority of seats at this election. Um, I suppose what is slightly more surprising is the performance of the Liberal Democrats. Liberal Democrats will now be the third largest party in Parliament. They are expected to have 71, um, 71 seats, which is you know, uh, better than their showing in 2010 when they went into coalition with the Conservative Party, but it's better than many people expected. Um, so they, they have done quite well. Equally, the Scottish Nationalist Party, uh, who advocate for an independent Scotland, have performed quite badly. They are under 10 seats. If you look back to 2015 or 2017, they had 56 seats back then, and now they're under 10. So mm -hmm. there's been significant, uh, significant reductions on that side. All right, but then, although Labour won a landslide with 412 seats, it got only 34% vote share. What's the implication of that on the voting pattern of the people? So there are two ways of looking at that. Uh, Labour's vote has been very efficient. And what I mean by that is Labour's vote, uh, Labour have gotten exactly the number of votes they need in the right places. So, if, for instance, in Hendon, in North London, Labour won the seat with 14 votes to spare, right? Every single vote you win above a majority doesn't actually matter, simply because you've already won the seat. Um, so the fact that they are winning seats with, you know, 14 votes to spare tells you that their vote is quite efficiently spread out. Um, what that means, however, is that a small swing, so a few people, you know, in the case of Hendon, you know, less than 10 people, but a small number of people across the country switching their vote from Labour to the Conservatives Essentially, at the next election means that the Labour Party might lose a significant number of seats. And we saw former Conservative Nigel Farage's Reform Party making some quite headlines, but, you know, they found it difficult to convert votes into seats. Do you see the Conservatives get over this defeat? So the Conservative Party over the last few weeks have hammered home the message that a vote for reform is a vote for Keir Starmer. And the reason they said that is the deputy leader of reform has bragged about how the Reform Party have pushed the Conservative Party out of power in the West Midlands at an election back in May. Um, the leader of reform, former leader of reform, Richard Tice, has said that he was happy to see the Conservatives pushed out of office elsewhere. And so you see that actually uh, lot, the message about supporting reform leading to a Labour government has been pushed quite heavily. And so I think in a good number of seats, people have thought, well, I might not necessarily be happy with the Conservative Party, but I'm more the but I'd be less happy with the Labour, with the Labour government. And so, right. you know, they, they've had to sort of hold their noses. And it does appear the Prime Minister has a huge task ahead of him. What are your expectations? So housing and planning reform has been central to Starmer's pledges. He told us that he's going to build more houses. Solar, so he's going to build more infrastructure, particularly around transport and energy. So there are expectations on that. We expect that in the next 100 days, there will be legislation on planning, there will be legislation on housing, there will be legislation on workers' rights. We also expect that there will be a new fiscal statement. So the government will set out their spending plans in September or October after they have the time to review the books and, and look at their spending plans in more detail. But we expect those, those to come over the next few days. So on Tuesday, we'll have new members of parliament being sworn in. They will swear their allegiance to the king. And then we will have a king's speech on the 17th. And that is when the government gets to set out what their priority is for the next year. All right. And the prime minister is due to appoint MPs to cabinet roles. How do you see that play out? So there is an existing shadow cabinet, and the rule used to be that if you had a shadow cabinet and you were elected into government, then you would take that shadow cabinet and they would become your cabinet in government. For several reasons today, that seems impossible. One example, uh, Thangin Debonair, who was a member of the shadow cabinet, lost her seat. And so, of course, she can't now be appointed to the cabinet. Um, she may end up in the House of Lords, but it's unlikely that she would make the cabinet from the House of Lords. Um, and for a number of other reasons, there are now MPs that have been elected who were MPs or ministers in a previous Labour government, and they will be expecting ministerial seats. And so we are, expected, we are expecting a reshuffle. Uh, we're expecting to see the cabinet appointed today and then junior ministers over the weekend.
Right then, political commentator Nathaniel Ogoni, thank you so much for talking to us on World Now. With pleasure. All right, now.